The rage of taxi drivers on a rampage. These were the scenes in major cities across the country earlier this year. From Cape Town to Port Elizabeth, angry taxi drivers blocked highways and vandalized buses during a three-day strike. Two of the main taxi ranks, Ekaeli Cha, deserted this morning. In Cape Town, taxi operators are still on strike. Are you going to the This is the sprawling suburb of Doenkop in Soweto, on the outskirts of Johannesburg. For thousands of residents, the day begins before first light as they start their commute to the city. For Jerry Motau, it is the start of what will be a 12-hour shift, ferrying commuters around the city. I went to school. I finished school in 1995. Then I tried to get myself some work, and then it was not good for me. Those were part-time jobs. So since I've been here, that's why I'm saying I've been here from 1998. Up until today is 2009. So I've been doing well with the taxi industry, so there's nothing wrong. I mean, I, I've changed I, 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 from what I used to be. I'm somebody else now. I'm, I'm I, I can say I'm disciplined. I know how to deal with people. I know how to, to communicate with people. It's a nice industry whereby I'm able to provide a lot. We as drivers, make sure that uh, we provide for our family. So we are not quite clear about the PRT. That is why right now, honestly speaking, we as the drivers, I, we don't like it. Because we are, what we are seeing with this uh, PRT, there's, a, there's going to be a lot of job losses. Taxi drivers are among the many cogs in the wheel of the powerful taxi industry in South Africa. Yeah. With its multi-million rand annual turnover, and arguable dominance of the public transport sector. Thousands, even millions of South Africans are dependent on it for survival. Now many see this livelihood under threat. This is the reason behind the fears, the new Bus Rapid Transit, or BRT, a network of buses arriving and departing every five minutes will allow commuters to catch a bus to their destination from anywhere in and around the city. Pioneered in Bogota in South America, the BRT has been credited with breathing new life into ailing public transport systems around the world. The first phase of the BRT in Gauteng, due for completion by June, stretches from Soweto to Santon. It's about moving people there by the name, via Via, but it's also about integrating communities that historically have been artificially divided. It's also about environmentally improving our city from an emissions perspective. It's also about creating opportunities for true broad-based black economic empowerment and the movement of the taxi industry into the provision of mainstream public transport. But most of all, it is about everyday citizens of Johannesburg, men and women who need to get around, be that at 5 o'clock in the morning, be that at 11 o'clock at night, and who are able to get around with dignity, with safety, and importantly, a transport system that brings people together and moves us away from a one-person, one-car culture. For the city of Johannesburg and its two and a half million residents, the introduction of more buses to the already clogged and congested highways and roads is a mixed blessing. Yet, it promises a radical overhaul of an old infrastructure built decades ago. And significantly, with a much smaller population in mind. To understand the daily trials of commuting around Johannesburg, we spent an afternoon with the McQuena family from Cajiso on the West Rand. Rebecca McQuena and her husband Mike both work at the University of Johannesburg. Their daily lives revolve around juggling work and dropping off and fetching their three children from school.
We woke up at half past four. We knock off home at ten past six. And then we just come through from Kahiso to Auckland Park. And obviously the traffic is hectic. We take too long. Sometimes we are even coming late at work. And then we have to rush because my firstborn school started at ten past seven. So we just rush. Negotiating the city's notoriously clogged streets can be a nightmare for commuters like the McQuenna family. Their 30 kilometer drive from Kahiso to Auckland Park every day takes its toll on their lives and their pockets. The kids, they knock off at two o'clock and then we have to put them in the aftercare and then we pay more for aftercare. So if we had a transport that can collect them when the school knocks off and they arrive earlier at home and they will be able to do their homeworks at home and they will be able to prepare, like for instance, they must polish their shoes before they go to sleep, they can do that earlier. And I won't have a problem of, you know, rushing home to do the homeworks and supervising them to do this and this and that. With up to six hours of their day taken up by travel, there is little time to socialize. For the McQuenas, the BRT would make their daily routine more manageable. If you kick up my records, yeah, that's a lot of news. As the BRT is rolled out across the city, this is what the station near Rebecca's home could look like. A faster, easier way to get to work and back. And sometimes I'm tired, but I must manage, I must prepare supper before half past seven so that we can be able to eat and the kids can have enough time to sleep. But selling the idea to harass commuters won't be the hardest challenge government has to overcome. It will be convincing the taxi industry to come to the party and providing the incentives. Just what these are has already been dogged by controversy amidst allegations of bribery and corruption in the procurement process. Will the ticking time bomb be effectively managed by government as the implementation date draws near? Or will protests and the threat of violence overshadow the ambitious plans to redraw the urban landscape of Johannesburg? It's a very sad day when a project that is aimed at improving the lives of the vast majority of the people of Johannesburg is threatened in that way. Because if the city was in fact closing off and saying, we're not willing to engage you, we're not willing to listen to your problems, uh, then of course one might find it slightly more understandable. But the reality is that if we want to build a public transport system that collectively we can be proud of, somewhere something has to start to move. Despite all the promises and pledges made, most of the heavyweights in the taxi industry refuse to budge. At this recent meeting outside Rampantine, taxi industry leaders mobilized their members to put up a united front against the BRT project. They don't know the pain that we went through. All right? Understand where we come from, the old regime. All right? People used to die. People, you know, this thing was caused by the system that was in place. For two years, we've been saying we don't understand the BRT. We ask them, they don't understand. They say they're waiting for the government to come up. We've been asking for a blueprint to show us what the BRT is, how it's going to affect us, how we're going to gain from it, what's going to happen. We've been asking for that. You know, it is these matters that basically drive us to say, let the government speak to the owners of the job, which is the people on the ground. As the taxi bosses railed against the new system, across the town, the city of Johannesburg unveiled the first BRT station to a carefully selected and approving crowd. Attendees and the media were invited to view the model station and bus and vote on matters like the colour scheme for the bus seating. It's this seeming focus on the finer points of detail while neglecting a brewing storm that has the taxi industry up in arms. 
Phase 1A of the project will run from Ellis Park in downtown Johannesburg to Regina Mundi in Soweto. The extensive network of buses will eventually run a 24-hour service for commuters. Taxi drivers are less than impressed. Today, Felicia Balala plans to vote with his feet. Right now, we are going to Chablani Amphim Theatre. Uh, Chablani Amphim Theatre is in a, we've got the mass meeting. The Javalani Amphitheatre in Soweto is the venue for this latest mass meeting and tempers are flaring. Most of their anger is directed at the government. This is what we are saying to the government. We do not want BRT, but TRT, which is a taxi rapid transit. That's what we want. The taxi industry proposes an indigenous solution to bad public transport, one that doesn't do away with taxis altogether. Riavaya will be implemented in a phased approach. So it's not a big bang, change public transport right across the city immediately. It's a complete transformation. And, and for an industry that has been largely informal, to make the move to the formal sector and the formal economy, uh, is not necessarily an easy thing. Let's talk the numbers. Let's say how many drivers directly affected, how many queue marshals directly affected. We might want to include how many cooking mamas directly affected. Then we're able to sit down and say, okay, this is the scale of what the BRT or the Avaya operation needs. When South Africa hosts the greatest tournament in football next year, all eyes will be on the country to see that it lives up to the high standards set by previous hosts. It is the continent's first time to hold this international sporting event and extravaganza. Will the threat of a violent backlash against the BRT disrupt the World Cup?